What's going on everybody and welcome to a brand new video on this channel. I do apologize for the way I sound. I am a little bit sick, but I wanted to create an updated video for Traders Connect as they've introduced a couple new platforms and I've recently started using them again. Once you have a Traders Connect and Traders Connect account, you're going to have to choose the amount of accounts you want. So for me, I have three accounts that uh, I purchased since I only need three accounts, but you can choose how many accounts you need and it's $10 per account. So once you have kind of set up your account and you've chosen your account, uh, how many accounts you need, you'll be under your dashboard here. All you have to do is go on over to the accounts section. So this is where you would come at. You can also toggle this from dark mode to light mode under settings and go under billing. This is where you can change how many accounts you want. If I click edit, you click modify subscription and add as many accounts as you need. If we go back to the dashboard over here under accounts, this is where we want to go over. We want to hit add account. So now we're going to do the basic standard MT5 setup, and then I will do the C trader setup. They also have DX trade here. I don't use DX trade as the platform, so I don't know how to set that up. You're just going to have to do a YouTube search for DX trade. So MT5, everything's the same. We're going to give the MT5 or MT4. Uh, they're both the same process. It's 10K of a stage one. Uh, what is it? Alpha Capital Group, ACG. The broker they use is ACG Markets. The server they use is live. So everything's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, broker, server. Account ID and account password is just the pass the login information they gave you. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and copy paste this inside of here. So account ID and then the password and that's it. You click confirm. We could see how quick that was. It connected our account. So now the same process does apply. I'm going to be adding my personal account here. So I'm going to call it PA and then the broker I'm using is Blueberry Markets. And I have to go on over here to find out that it's the live server. And then same thing, uh, same login and same password that we're just going to copy paste on over and hit confirm. Now you can see I have my PA and I have my 10K stage one account. And now for the C Trader account, I have a 5K with uh, funding pips and they don't offer MetaTrader. So with C Trader, so it is in beta testing. So you just have to read this and uh, accept it. And in here, the first time that you do it, it's just going to ask you to log into your C Trader account. So it's going to ask you for your your login and password. And once you have that, then it's going to ask you uh, to create a profile. So I already have this set up for my 5K account as I was trading it. So I'm just going to choose my profile. But as soon as you click confirm, it's just going to take you to a C Trader login page, I believe, or or on here, and you just input your C Trader information from that. Uh, funding company. So if with funding pips, I just log into my funding pips C trader account, and then you get to choose the accounts you want. So now under here it says account missing. This won't come up for you. Uh, I, whenever you log into your account, it's going to ask you to choose all of your accounts or choose which accounts you want. So if I just click reauthenticate here, after you log in, it's going to ask you which accounts do you want to have access to. So for example, I had my 5k account, 5k stage one, my 25k uh, funded account that I blew. And then these are the different stages for those accounts. So you can have them all, you know, give authentication to, or you can just choose the one you have. So right now I'm on the stage two. I'm not doing pretty well on it, but we can see that you can kind of select which ones you want. I'm going to keep them all selected to have them all authenticated. Uh, but there we go. So we click allow access. And then once we're in here, you can give it a profile name. So to for you to identify it easier on. So you can just say, I'm just going to say funding pips because this is my funding pips account. So if I confirm so this is funding pips. So inside of funding pips, you got to choose the account that you want to trade a uh, copy from, I mean, trade copy to or from. So it'll give you a selection over here of all the accounts. Now, the simplest way to do this is actually just pull up, you know, C trader and have a look at what the account is at. So I'm just loading up C Trader right here. 767 is the last three digits, so 767. But you could see all the different accounts here. You just got to choose the correct one. So whatever it ends in, normally the last four digits or the last three digits, they're all pretty different, you can see. So you just choose the last three digits. Here is where you can identify or give it a name to that account. So I'm going to say 5K stage two funding pips. And then confirm. And there we are. We have all three accounts connected to each other. Now, once now we're going to head on over to the trade copier. Everything on the left hand side is where we want to go. So we want to go under trade copier. 
and then we want to create a master account right up here. So this master account is what you're going to be copying from. So we're going to copy from our 10K phase one account and we're going to copy to our 5K uh, funding pips stage two account. You don't have to have like these platforms opened up. You just need your master account platform opened up and you trade from that master account. And I think a couple questions I got before were like, uh, what happens if I give this login information to someone else? Well, or, or if they just have the login information, regardless of whatever the reason may be, all you need is just to be able to trade that master account, open positions and close positions from that master account. And then it will copy on over to all the slave accounts. That's all you need to do. If you don't, if you don't trade the master account and you're trying to copy it, it won't work. Like you can't, you can't trade off of say, for example, the 5k for it to copy to the 10k because we're copying the 10k to the 5k. So you can't trade the 5k and expect it to copy to the 10k account. So that's what's kind of going on here. Now in here uh, for risk type, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. It depends on the type of trader you are. Most of us, I think, are bounce based traders where we like to risk a percentage based uh, risk for each trade. If you don't know what type of risk you prefer, you can go under calculate your risk settings, which we'll, we will do. And the risk setting is a bit weird to understand where it says 100 percent is equal to one to one risk. That just basically means if you leave this at 100 here, 100 uh, percent, it's going to risk one percent on that account relative to the other account but it'll make it all easy if we click calculate your risk settings here because then it'll give you a little prompt that says, do you want to calculate your position sizing using percentage of your account balance, which is what we want to do. So we're going to click percentage based risk. Now there's lot based risk and fixed lot rate, rate uh, risk, but I went with percentage based risk. We're just going to hit next. Now it's going to say how many, what percentage do you want to risk from your master account? Now, standard is 1% for everyone, I believe. We all want to risk 1% on our uh, funded accounts, but this is where you can tweak it up. Even if you have like a couple personal accounts and you risk 5% on this one, 20% on the other one, 10, this is where you can uh, you know, bounce around with it. So I'm going to say 1% I want to risk on my 10K account. So we press next. And I want the slave account to also receive or risk 1%. So I want 1% on the master and I want 1% risk on the slave account, all relative, of course. So once we click next, it's going to tell us that we want, we need to put in a balance multiplier with a risk setting of 100%. Once we click apply, it'll put in the balance multiplier and it'll put in our risk percentage right there, which is 100% meaning one-to-one -one risk. Now, before we continue on, sometimes with these small accounts, you do need to enable some advanced settings. So if you come under advanced settings, we see force minimum lot size and we see force maximum lot size. We need to enable this because sometimes the position size could be too small for the 5K to open up. So it's just not going to open up a position at all. So we want to enable this regardless of whatever the position size may be on the master account. It will still open up the minimum lot size of 0.01 lots on the uh, slave account that is a little bit lower. This will make a lot more sense with a personal account, which I'll also be doing here. Now, if you want some good spreads, I would highly recommend not enabling the stop loss and take profit settings. Basically, meaning if you check mark all of these, anytime you place an order with a stop loss and a take profit, the stop loss and take profit will be copied on over. Now, you might be saying that's a good thing. Well, technically, it all depends on the broker. If you have a good broker with good slippage, then you might as well leave these off because if you have these enabled, funding pips might take you out earlier than, say, my 10K Alpha Capital Group because my Alpha Capital Group's broker is a lot better than funding pips spreads. For example, this is all as, as an example. And then once it comes to that stop loss level on my funding pips, it'll take me out. But on my ACG account, it will still leave me in. So if I have these off and I know that ACG has really good spreads, which I do, I know they have amazing spreads, um, then I would love to leave these off so that if ACG hits the stop loss, it will automatically close all of my position. So even if a stop loss is set on your master account and it gets hit, it'll close the position on all accounts. It won't leave them open. As soon as the master account closes its position, it'll close the position for all of its slave accounts. So I'm going to leave this off because I want good spreads or it's like a little trick to get good spreads. So in here, once we have everything set, we click confirm. Now we have this status on. Now we're copying from our 10K to our 5K. And now we will be adding our personal account. So we're going to click 
add slave here and we're going to do the 10k and we're going to copy to our personal account so now this is the same thing we got to choose our risk type and risk setting but we're just going to go calculate our risk so we want percentage base risk that's what we're going to do we're going to click next on my master account i want to risk one percent and on my slave account say for example now i'm going to probably add a couple hundred dollars into this account i want to risk five percent on the slave account i want my personal account to risk five percent whereas my master account to stay at one percent so if i click next it's going to say balance multiplier with the risk setting of 500 percent meaning that it's going to risk one percent on the other one but 500 uh five percent on my other account so we click apply and in here we also have to go to advanced settings and force the minimum and maximum lot size just because you know the position might be too small to open on the slave account so regardless of whatever it is i want it to still open up a 0 0.01 lot and same thing with this copy stop loss copy take profit i want that off because i know blueberry markets doesn't have good spreads or at least the account i'm using is not raw spreads so i want to be able to still stay in my position and not be taken out earlier on so we're going to keep these off once it's all set we hit confirm and we are almost done we have one more thing to do, but we can see that our master account is now copying to our personal account and is now copying to our 5k account. Now these are all separate. It doesn't mean that this is copying to this and then this is copying to this. It's the 10k copying to the uh, personal and the 10k copying to the fifth uh, 5k stage two account. So it's not copying from one another. This is the master account. This is what it's being copied from. So before we move on, we want to go under symbol mapping, which is here for each account and make sure that the stuff is, you know, um, the symbols are mapped here correctly. So for example, we can see some symbols weren't mapped. You know how you can see that hk50.pro here. This dot pro is not available in the person. I think this is the personal account, right? Yeah, this is the personal account. So this uh, like dot pro extension is not here. So it has to map it over. So for example, I think there is maybe NAS100 is a good one. So for example, we have NAS100. Say there's like a huge list, right? You can always filter the symbols, search of NAS100. So this is .pro. All we gotta do is click select, and then we search up NAS100. And there we go. So now we're mapping it from this one to this one. So that if we take a trade on NAS100 on our 10K account, it will copy on over to our 5K account, where there won't be any sort of discrepancy where it won't copy it on over because it's not the same symbol. So now if we come over here, we search up NAS100. Now this is being copied to this extension. So you wanna just go over the ones that aren't being copied on over. So you wanna make sure that these symbols are mapped. You can also click auto mapping and it'll map it too, but it'll automatically be mapped from the beginning. So we're just gonna head on back to trade copy by clicking up here. And we're gonna go over to our 5K stage two account and map the symbols as well. We can see some of these haven't been mapped on over. Oh, NAS100, sorry, it wasn't mapped on over. So we just go over here and type NDX, I think it's, yeah, CC, like funding pips's version of NAS is NDX USD. And it wasn't automatically mapped, so we're gonna map this on over. I'm gonna click uh, the check mark. So now it should be all okay. Now everything is kind of mapped on over. If I go over to NAS100, it's already mapped on over, amazing. So we're basically done. Our accounts have been all linked up. This is your dashboard. It'll kind of show you your portfolio value and what the days and uh, week PL, monthly PL is. So far, I'm not doing well on this 5K account, but you know, it is what it is. I'm just trying to pass as fast as I can. So I've just been taking a couple losses. Uh, but now if I head on over to, say NAS100 is going up currently right now, and I want to put in a 0.01 .01 lot size. So let me actually pull up my Blueberry MT5 as well. And I'll show you why forcing the minimum because this 0 0.01 risking 1% of this six and a half dollars is not enough. So if I click, say, sell here, right, let me just accept the terms, sell. So now if we go over to Blueberry, didn't look like it opened it up, but on my C trader, it did open it up. So I guess in the same sense, uh, this, if we go under trade copier, I think there's not, oh, so there's not enough leverage inside of my personal account to be able to open up a position on NAS 100. So I just have to add money, but once I add money, it will have enough leverage to be able to open it up. It's just $6 isn't enough money to open up a position with one to 500 leverage. That's why I didn't open up a position on my personal account because it's only six and a half dollars in here. 
I have to uh, add some more money into it. You can see once we close the position on C Trader, it also closed the position. So if I go buy, it'll open up a position here on C Trader as well. And then let's just say we have a uh, take profit up there and a stop loss down here. So now this take profit and stop loss didn't get copy and over, but once it tags either end, we will see that the position will close. There we go. See how uh, in our account it hit our take profit and in our cl it closed our position here. Now, if I had say a take profit zone and stop loss copied on over, just like how I have it on my master account, uh, C Trader could have taken me out earlier than what uh, ACG could have done here. So it's kind of getting like like good spreads on you know these different platforms. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a 2024 version of it. I might do an updated version if they release something new. But yeah, give this video a like and I'll see you guys all next time. Take care.